<laughs> hey, today we're going to have a, an interview with a gentleman from South Africa. It's going to be a real interesting uh, story to see how it differs the archery over there as it does over here in the United States. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Roy Canterbury, and I'm going to be your host today on Archery Talk 101, and we have a special guest. Welcome to the show. Hi, Roy. Thank you so much for having me. Now, maybe you could introduce yourself and give us a little background of how you got started in archery and and uh, what you're doing. Okay. Um, my name is Hudefa Hassan. Uh, I am here from South Africa. Um, I've, if you can say from 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 a childhood, I've like always been into 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 wood and making. I've I've like been a, a passionate about um, basically anything to do with outdoors. You know, um, I've always had a liking to do things the primitive way. Um, I was never a fan of hunting with a gun, you know, I always had this fantasy that no, if, if I ever hunt, I want to hunt with a bow and arrow, or I want to hunt with a spear, or you know, uh, something that is a lot more primitive, but obviously, as you grow up, you do lose it out quite a bit, you know, um, and then it took me to a stage where um, obviously, um, uh, the, re the religion I follow is Islam. I am, I am, I am a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Um, so, a uh, part of our religion, um, there are four sports, or you can say four pleasures. You know that our Prophet told us that we should like do. Um, and amongst one of them is archery. It is horse riding, swimming, and uh, and then the, then the the fourth one is 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 a uh, archery. Um, as I'm doing my studies, I start to fall in love with archery. Uh, 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 basically, I can actually remember in some of the books, as the lecturer is giving a lecture, and I'm sitting and I'm throwing a bow, <laughs> and I'm throwing an arrow and a hunting head. Um, and then I decided, no, okay, this is, I think this is a time on my life where I think I need to now actually, uh, you know, take on archery. Um, but obviously, as you know, in South Africa, traditional archery was hardly heard of, hardly to be uh, spoken of. So as I'm Googling archery, I found, I came across a, a compound and I saw the price of it and I was like, no, this is artificial. Um, and then I found on eBay, <laughs> I found a bow and arrow on eBay. Um, in, in South African and you can say it's around 3,000 for a bow. And at that time, I must have been still studying and I couldn't afford anything at all. Um, and from there, I said, okay, now how else am I going to have a bow? Um, no one's just going to hand me out, uh, no one's going to just hand me out a bow. Um, then I went on Google, right? <laughs> and I found a website called Poor Folks. Uh, I'm not sure if it's still up and running still. Uh, so I followed a few people there on uh, Poor Folks and, and I actually followed the, 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 the tutorials on like how to build a bow. Uh, I think the first bow took me like a, a month and a half. And, and I started and I looked and I saw a piece of oak and from there I started hand carving it. And, and I'm telling you, every friend of mine that saw me, they all thought I'm like insane, you know? How am I gonna make a bow and arrow out of, you know, just a normal a, 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 a piece of oak? Um, then I went home and my grandfather had a small machine that helped me out to, you know, to do the carving. And like even there, my, Dad also told me, he said, you're wasting your time. You're spending hours and hours every day and you're trying to do something that is not even a, a, a possible. But anyways, I just stood. Uh, <laughs> I was quite firm on it. And I think after around two months, I finally uh, built myself a bow. And that was the first uh, uh, bow I, I've ever had. It was made out of oak. It was a long uh, 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 bow. I'm sure it was around 70 inches. So every day I go and I start a practicing outside there for about half a year. Um, anyways, after um, after I completed my studies in uh, teaching, 
Then I decided, okay, now what am I gonna am I gonna, gonna do for my business? Um, and at that time there, I said, okay, I want to actually try and sell a bow and arrow and see if I can actually make money uh, out of it. Obviously, I have a passion. I enjoy the this lot here. So I built a bow and I built this second bow. And I think that was the hardest part in my life ever, like starting into archery because now I'm 25 years old. It's now obviously time to settle down. It's time to get a job. And here I'm sitting and I'm making a, 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 a bow and arrows. And I tell you, my dad was like totally against it. He was every single day, he used to just shout at me and he used to, he used to like be on my case every single day. <laughs> so the very first bow I had, I did this, okay, now it's time to actually sell a bow so I can actually see if I can make money out of it and also to prove to my dad that, you know, I can do something out of it. So two, two months of hard effort and I sold the bow for, if you can say in, in uh, US dollars currently, you can say I must have sold the bow for around 50 to 60 bucks. Uh, two months of hard effort, uh, but at all, obviously it was now to show my dad, like, you know, that, that I can make a bow and from there I can uh, sell a bow, you know, and um, praise the Lord, um, I managed to make a few, few more other bows, um, but obviously they were all self bows, um, and I managed to sell one or two, um, and finally I think my dad was now convinced, like you know, that now I will be able to actually do something out of it. Then. Um, so then the, the first time ever I had around eight bows at me, all self bows, and I took it to a flea market there. And as I'm at the flea market and, and I'm advertising it, but there's no interest at, at all. So a lady came up to me and she told me that, um, uh, listen, yeah, why don't you start to teach archery? You know how to shoot the bow and arrow. There is no one here in SA who is willing to come out here, you know, teach our kids archery. Um, and then that time is like me that no, this is something you know that I can actually get into. Um, so at home, I had a bows in stock. I had a few arrows. I made handmade targets, and I started teaching archery at my. Uh, 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 I started teaching archery behind in, in, in my house. So I think that's where the name Home of Archery was basically then created. Uh, from there, I had no, no knowledge of archery. I had to actually go on Google, learn some tricks and terms, you know, on, on how to shoot a bow and how to teach and so on. Um, going into 2016, that was basically where I am. Uh, and then I decided, no, I need to actually take it a bit more serious. So I was lucky that there was a guy by the name of Dietmar or doctor. Um, Dietmar was from Austria um, and he ran one of the biggest archery schools overseas. And I was actually lucky I was able to get um, a chance and I spent, and, and I actually danced and done an advanced archery course at him. Um, and basically that's what helped me the most. It gave me a base. It taught me how to teach archery. He taught me basically whatever I know today, everything is obviously taught of from him. Um, after I done the course, um, now I, I was actually happy because now I had a certificate, you know, to show that I can actually now teach archery. Um, and, you know, if you actually look back, um, 2016 just seems now around the corner, you know, and um, gratefully uh, uh, today we are when we are, when we are running um, four archery uh, 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 branches around South Africa. We teach in around seven schools here in, in South Africa. Um, our club home of archery is one of the largest 
traditional archery clubs in the whole of South Africa. We have approximately 250 archers that are at us on a weekly base, uh, starting from the age of seven years old, going all the way up to the age of 74 years old. Uh, so yes, that was basically the journey of, of how Home of Archery was obviously created. Um, and then side by side, um, obviously I was also into bone and making, obviously. Um, and then I'd done a short course, an intro course on how to make laminated bows. And in 2016, that's why I now switch over from self bows. And, um, and then I started making laminated bows. But obviously I started on one design. And today I am happy to say that I built at least around eight different designs of bows. Um, our famous uh, bow that I have is a long bow called the Shadow Stalker. Uh, the Shadow Stalker is obviously, it uh, has gone to America also, it has gone to, uh, to Italy, it's gone to Spain, it's gone outside the borders of South Africa. Uh, so that, that is basically the bow that's like uh, the highlight of, of uh, the bows that I am, am make. Yeah, that, that... That's interesting how you, you got started and, and where you took your journey. Um, I, I know uh, there'd be some people that might want to be get in contact with you to get one of your bows. How would they get in touch with you? Okay, uh, so I do have a website called uh, homeofarchery.co.za. Uh, if you log on to my website, you will be able to see basically all the stuffs that I do sell, all the different type of bows. Uh, from long bows to hybrids to recurves to horse bows to take down recurves. Um, so it's, it's actually quite easy. Um, and my email addresses are there. And my phone number is there. So if anybody does require a bow, they can just log on to the website. They can either on the order online or they can just uh, 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 pop me an email. And then obviously we get started over the process. Yeah, and I'll leave a link to, in the description, you know, to make it easier for them to get to you. But they can always contact, uh, you know, message me and I can get to the contact information, you know, because, you know, it sounds like you've, you've got quite a journey and, and you know, your bows going all over the world that you're making is is definitely uh, um, a nice, nice uh, thing to have, you know, your journey go to from not even having the first one to making one and then seeing how your journey go that, that that's really a uh, um, you know, a testament to, you know, your dedication to, you know, want to make something of this sport. Um, it, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of nice that, you know, all of a sudden you got 200 people in a group in there and it's kind of all started from you just wanting to have a bow. <laughs> it's quite fascinating. <laughs> and the time that I had a bow, um, I could only afford one arrow. I had one <laughs> arrow that my sister, uh, she managed to order it for me. And uh, basically, um, I was left, left for the shooting with one arrow only. And then if I look uh, uh, back, you know, when I start off, I had a arrow. And uh, today I'm sitting and I'm supplying uh, basically a majority of South Africa with arrows. So, um, yeah, it's always good to reflect at the beginnings of yeah, from one arrow to hundreds of arrows. <laughs> that's, that's it. Yeah, that 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 that's quite a quite a journey in in you know your archery. Um, you know, I see a couple bows in the back, and and are those those couple that you make then? Uh, yes, those are the bows I made. Uh, they extremely old though. They they from two thousand and eighteen, I think so, two thousand and seventeen. I use those for um, I use those for teaching, uh, for teaching archery. Um, here in South Africa, when I started taking up uh, competitions, um, I think I was the only Indian person, uh, basically in the whole of the IBO of South, of South Africa. So it was it was it was it was a challenging journey for myself because you know you go there with a bow and arrow you're the only traditional guy and everybody else are compound shooters 
and then you have to split and deal with the comments uh, <laughs> and how much they <laughs> criticize, you know. I can, I can actually remember a guy told me, he said, in today's time, we have aeroplanes to go overseas. You are sh 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 shooting a bow, that's like taking a boat to go overseas, you know. <laughs> you need to uh, move up on the times. Yeah, so that was yeah. also a part of one of the hardest times also. Yeah, yeah there, there, there's a lot of traditional archers out there and you know, I don't distinguish between what type of archery shooting. You know, I after you have a stick with a string on it, playing in a stick. That's that's archery. You know, whether it's a longbow, recurve, compound, crossbow, it, it all has the same principle, and it's it's all just archery. And you know, there mm -hmm. there's advantages and disadvantages to both of them. Hundred percent. Yes. So, do you do you hunt with it as well? Um, so since last, since, uh, since you can see lockdown, since uh, the COVID hit, um, I've actually then had an opportunity to actually start hunting with a bow and arrow. Um, I really prefer to go on the highest level of hunting. Um, so I don't hunt with a recurve and the carbon arrows. I hunt with a long bow, a full size uh, long bow and wooden arrows in specific. Um, um, I have hunted, uh, I think is the, the, this would be the, I think the fourth year that, that had I've been hunting, uh, we've managed to hunt, uh, Libyas. we've managed to hunt, a uh, less back, we've managed to hunt, uh, quite a few in, uh, in uh, palace also, and, uh, and a few, and, and, and also. Uh, so I do I do enjoy hunting a lot. Uh, walk and stalk is extremely hard, especially but in the long bow. I have attempted it a few times, but I was quite unsuccessful on it uh, because you require at least a whole week, you know. Uh, yeah. The farms here in South Africa, and the animal just, just here each and and they are thousands of acres long, and that animal is just. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of kind of tough to sneak on them and, and get close enough with a, a recurve because you know you don't have the the range that you do you know with yes. a firearm. You know mm -hmm. that that's that's kind of the difference between you know the two sports. You know, with a gun you see him, you shoot him, your hunt's over. With a bow, your hunt's just starting once you see him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is a part of a journey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and over there in Africa, there's there's a lot of different kinds of games to to hunt. Uh, what's the largest game that you've taken with a bow? Um, I would give it to a the beast. Uh, the beast apparently is the hardest animal to shoot because of the thick skin it has. And um, and what I've realized also, I've, I've, I've even had a, 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 a mistake on it also, where if you have to shoot, Put it in a pala on the front shoulder, you'll easily hit him in the, the heart or in the lung. But when a, 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 a beast, it's slightly more to the middle, you know. And I didn't know the death, so on my first hunt on the a, 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 a beast, we hunted and I shot it on the front shoulder. And the arrow hit and it's stuck in the animal and the animal just ran away. And we've, we've tacked it for some time, but unfortunately we were unsuccessful. <laughs> yeah, that, that happens, you know, that, you know, here, you know, with the deer, you know, it's pretty much all the deer in the same spot. So you don't have to worry about, you know, multiple yes. different ones. And, you know, we don't have that variety, you know, we have the elk and the caribou and moose and, you know, it's all kind of roughly about the same shot placement for them, you know, for archery. But over there, yeah, that that's interesting how one animal you have to shoot in one spot, another one in a different different spot. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a kind of a challenging thing. Yeah, yeah, that, that is that is real challenging. Uh, now, for uh, you know, target shooting, do you, you guys run like three D shoots over there as well? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, in South Africa, uh, there's a famous one. I'm sure in America you'll know it as as IBO. Right. Um, we also have a similar 
thing as IBO also. It, it is actually also called IBO. Uh, and from there, it does uh, branch out into ABO, so African Bawantin Organization. Uh, so there's the, 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 the an organization in South Africa uh, that um, that uh, that gave us the whole three D ex ex experiences. Um, it's uh, based on a hunting setup, so you only allowed one arrow per three uh, D animal, um, and you shoot uh, uh, twenty targets at a time. Uh, so again, essay uh, to qualify uh, for your South African uh, colors or for your South African national colors. Um, ABO is one of those organizations that do a first task also. Um, so um, ABO is basically the most common competition uh, for 3D. Um, and from home of archery, we try and go as much as possible uh, for the ABO comps. Obviously, to be as an introductory to those who are coming up into archery also. And then then obviously for ourselves, for the competition, for the enjoyment of it, uh, we take a, 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 a quite a bit in the beauty. Um, I shoot it quite a bit. Uh, in South Africa, I've shot like so many from 2018. Um, I've been like the champion of the South Africa in 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 ABO. Uh, so like, as you can see, it has even the 3DI uh, thing there. So, but long before I've been the national champion in 2017, 2018, to 2020, 21, and 22 also. There's not a, a much competition where I can have like at least 20 or 30 to shoot against. There is a much smaller comp um, because of longbows and wooden arrows. Basically, in the whole of South Africa, uh, I'm the only supplier that actually supplies wooden arrows in the whole of South Africa. So like that, you, you can also see that there isn't a, a much um, competition between um, you know, the, the longbow shooting. Um, a, a majority of the traditionals uh, shoot either the longbow with carbon arrows, um, other it's recurves and carbon arrows, those uh, hold um, uh, more of the competitive uh, uh, side in traditional archery. Um, and, and then uh, from, the, from, from, the, from this year, uh, IFA, IFA has also uh, started up with 3D shoes also. Uh, so that will be the first that, that will actually take a part in the whole IFA uh, 3D shoots set up and the competitions and so on. Yes, it seems like, you know, it's no matter where you're at, you know, archery is kind of basically about the same. You know, you have your 3D shoots and your different target shoots and and all kinds of different stuff. Do you guys do um, a lot of rain, long range shooting with your recurves and longbows? Okay, um, so you see, with the ABO rules, um, longbow, you will shoot a maximum of around 25 yards only. Uh, and recurves, uh, they shoot a maximum of 35 yards only. Um, but if you shoot IFA, uh, they you shoot 70 and 80 yards uh, shots. Uh, on the field shoots, that's where mostly we take a, a part and you shoot all your long distances. Um, on the animals, uh, if, it, if it is on a competition, then they have specific uh, rules that they really don't go above uh, 35 years. Um, the, the events that I host, I host at least uh, uh, three inter-club competitions where I invite obviously all of our sections all of our uh, 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 branches, all of our schools. And we also open it up to the balance of South Africa that want to take a part in it also. Uh, so like in the shoots I have, uh, if, you, if you 
complete your basics, right? So that means if it's your first year of doing archery, I uh, allow you to shoot only up to 15 meters. Um, and then if you complete your advanced, then we allow you to go up to up to 25 pads. And once you complete advanced level two, that's where you start shooting 50, 60, 70 yards on 3D animals also. Yeah, keep them down to where, you know, they have a little better chance of hitting them until you get a little better skill. You don't want to shoot them long ranges because okay. you're just going to lose arrows. <laughs> <laughs> well, for sure. And and because I'm the supplier of arrows, so like everybody complain and say, you set it up hard because you want extra business. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you got to make it challenging for them. So, you know, if it's real easy, then it's it's not much fun. I know. When I first started uh, going to 3Ds, you know, I had a whole quiver full of arrows and, and and I was hoping I could finish the course of 40 targets and still have an arrow left. You know, I was like, okay, you shoot through three. And I was like, okay, I can't find that arrow. And then you get done and then finally, you know, keep going, going, and going. And it was like, okay, I, I only need one arrow for the whole course, you know, where, where you're not even sure if you can make it through. And, and that's just, mm -hmm. you know, as you get better, you get, you know, where you can hit better and you know how to judge yardage. And, you know, that's always the, you know, challenges, you know, judging that yardage. Uh, the most fascinating thing for me is that um, I teach kids from the age of six years old, right? Um, and by the time they reach the age of around eight years or nine years old, those youngsters are shooting around 25 in, in meters in distance on 3D animals. And, and like, you know, um, whenever I look back at it, the best or the, the most joy I have is that where you can see an archer who started from the basics, from the beginning, you know, and after two years of doing archery at you, now they actually, you know, taking a part in all the big events in SA and they are taking a positions and so on. And for, for me, I feel that is where the sweetness of a each and archery actually lies in them. Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I became an archery instructor in 1995 and, you know, I've taught lots and lots of people how to shoot and it, it's so, so nice when you see maybe, uh, I mostly teach compound. Um, I do teach some recurve, but mostly just compound where I focus my, my coaching on, but you know, where you take it and they have, you know, like that 20 yards, they got that six or eight inch group and then you work with them. And now the next thing you know, they're, they're shooting one inch groups. Um, you know, that kind of stuff is nice. And I had one guy I taught brand new archer, never had a bow before, come in, bought a bow, taught him how to shoot, sold him his bow, taught him how to shoot. Uh, two weeks later, he comes in, he'd already got a Robin Hood. He's like, <laughs> like what I did. I wrecked that. I was like, yeah, that's nice trope. I'll hang it up in my office. <laughs> you, you know, and, and when you when you know you can, you know, you can teach people to do that, that is that's really cool. And my, my goal as a coach to teach them how to shoot better than I can shoot. That's just for sure. That's right now. <laughs> You know, I now reach a stage where, where those who I thought that they are now surpassing myself, you know, that they like shoot way above me. <laughs> and yeah. then they always rub it in, then always. Yeah, it just, you know, you, you just need to know how to shoot. You don't have to be, you know, the top Olympic archer that, you know, always wins all the Olympics to, in order to be able to teach because sometimes those are guys that, and gals that can't teach yeah you know and then you might get somebody that's not as good but they know all the technique and see what you're doing and they can make you improve it and that that's you know like you said that's that's the fun part is when you see all of a sudden their skills start developing and developing getting better and better and and then you know go from there and i know when i first started coaching it's pretty much i'm going to watch you shoot i'm going to try and see what you're doing you know, nowadays, you know, with the phone and the videos, you can video it and play it back and you can say, ah, oh, okay, a little bitty fine thing. You know, it's like when I've looked at, you know, at, you know, some fairly top archers, their form, you know, I'm looking at it, it's like, okay, I don't see a problem. I don't see it. Oh, maybe take just a little slight little tweak, you know, and as you're doing it at the higher level, you know, you need somebody to look at and tweak it. It's hard to see your own self doing it. And I looked at some of the videos and it's like, oh man, that was that was wrong. <laughs> That's not what I teach. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's uh, um, what would you say to a new archer that wants to get into archery? I would say um, don't hurry into it. Start out off slowly, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, take one step at a time. And, uh, many archers, they come in and they see everybody shooting 20 and 30 meters and they're like, no, I want to do it also, you know. So I always tell them that you are still new to archery. Let's focus on the basics. Without your basics, Without your basics, you will not go anywhere at all, you know. Um, so I would always, I would always make them work and to try and perfect the technique. If they got excellent technique, they can shoot 20, 30, and 40 meters quite easily. But if they don't focus on the on the your correct stance or your correct anchor or your back tension. Then no matter how much you can practice, you will always have issues on the uh, the distances. So always the basics, it always helps. <laughs> uh, to such an extent, also uh, we'll be there at 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 a competition, you know, and and like they'll be shooting amazing, and then they'll just hit a, a low. And they'll hit zip or and a zero year or five, you know. And then I'll go, I'll go up to them. Although they're doing archery now for, for two or three years, and I'll go up to them and I'll tell them that uh, how about we start out of from the beginning again, you know? Draw your bow, anchor, inhale, focus on your spot. And they'll release and they just go straight and hit the bullseye, you know. <laughs> uh, so my, my advice always to, to, to a new archer is just take it as slow as possible, you know. Archery is not a sport that's, that's done um, instantly, you know. Like uh, the Turkish archery in their manual, uh, they have the, 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 the Turkish archers of the past. They used to shoot five meters for six months. For six months, they should shoot only five meters only. And only after that, the instructors would allow them to, to now go further back, you know. So always start him off slow and you will always appreciate the result uh, in the long term then for sure. Yeah, what what would you say to the person that says I, I I don't need a coach I can I can learn to do it myself. <laughs> I would say take your bow and arrow. I will see you again two two weeks time. You know it, it's like it's like <laughs> uh, and 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 I've actually seen it. You know a person comes to me, they do archery for like a couple of months, right? And they like okay, no, build me a bow. I want a bow. So, 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 so I go out and make them a bow. And then um, two months later, they'd be like, no, I know everything. I know the basics. I, I have my own equipment. Um, I will practice from home, you know. And, and then he said, okay, I'll practice from home. And then I will start coming for all your competitions. And I'm telling you that specific individual, he did not take a position after that ever again, you know. So no matter how good of an archer you, you are, uh, you, your, your archery family will always be there to support you, especially on days where you, you shoot horrible. And to, to, your instructor will always be able to take you up onto a next level because the more you think, no, I know, the less you are aware or the less conscious you are of your of your errors and i feel that's where that's where an instructor comes in you know although i'm i'm an instructor for so many archers i still go uh, 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 back to one of the other instructors and on a weekly basis and i ask them come and see me come, come test my form see how i'm shooting you know so on a continuous base you can always be reminded you're doing this you're doing that and you can always stay on top on the top of your level. Yeah, basically you had to be open to be coachable. 
you know, even a high level coach needs, needs some help sometimes, you know, every athlete has a coach that, that performs yeah. any kind of level, you know, mm-hmm. no matter what sport it is, whether it's, whether it's archery or, or, or golf or baseball, football, basketball, um, uh, you know, race car driving, you know, y'all have a coach, you got somebody that's helping you out. You know, the, the race car drivers, they have a whole pit crew telling them what to do, you know, like, okay, they go past, okay, you're clear. You can move over. Cause you know, you need somebody helping you out, directing you, you know, keeping, keeping you online. Mm-hmm. And, and like the other thing I saw also, you know, uh, if you are a part of a club, you, you will always stay into archery, you know, as soon as you, you take yourself away from that environment of where you are there on a daily basis or where you are there on a weekly basis and you take yourself out of that environment, what I see is that many archers start drifting away, you know, they don't pick up their bows in like a month and then it goes to two months and then they just basically actually just dies out of their lives, you know, and and I think that is one of the issues I have quite a bit on the youth, you know, um, if, I, if it is an adult, an adult can still understand, you know, I have to still train and so, so and so. A youngster of 12 years, 13, 14, 15 years old, actually for them, it becomes a hobby. And then slowly they just move on to something else, you know. Uh, the successful archers that I've seen there at us um, are always those where the parents uh, 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 make sure they don't miss a single lesson of archery. And, you know, um, at the end of the day, you can always see the results in either our club comms or in the, in the HABIO or in Serenifa, may they always, you know, above everybody else. Yeah, it's, you, you just got to stay with it. You know, that's, that's the, the thing is you get out of any sport and, and it's hard to get back into it. And, mm-hmm. and you know, that's, that's just one of the things that you got to do now. When you practice or when you have any of your students practice, do you have them shoot lots of arrows or do you have them you know, like shoot less arrows, but try and make sure they're perfect arrows? Okay, so so we actually structure um, our lessons on a, a monthly on a monthly basis, right? Um, if you have to take a 10 year old, you know, and you tell him, okay, there's a target, shoot for me, you know, after one lesson, two lesson, third lesson, he's going to get a, 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 a bird of it. Because to him, you're doing the same thing every day. It doesn't really make any sense to him. He don't get any enjoyment out of it, you know. Uh, so the lessons I have is the first week, I will focus on the technique, all right? On the technique of archery, your basics will slow everything down uh, to such an extent where I'll even take a whistle And I tell everybody, okay, uh, uh, throw your bows and anchor. And each archer has to hold it there for at least the amount, the the duration I blow the the whistle again, you know. So in that time, it helps them focus on the anchor, the back tension, and it starts uh, building them them up on strength also, you know. So I'll do this type of drills on the first lesson of of like every month, you know? And then the second lesson, I will then do cap shooting. Uh, cap shooting uh, to assist them to perfect their gaps, you know, to make sure they are able to, uh, to apply the gap at all the distances, high, low. Um, but at the same time, we don't do the same activity of just hitting a target. You know, we'll either use balloons or we'll use, a, 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 you know, those those small a, 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 a paper cups or we'll do a game called X and O's, you know. Uh, so each lesson will always change it, uh, but obviously having fun at it also. And at the same time, hidden, there will always be an agenda to, to, to either assist them on the aiming or assist them on the concentration and so on, you know. And then the last lesson of every month is always known as a 
connectivity. So it basically, we will do like, I say, a game called Arches vs. Zombies, you know, where we do, we, where we, where we uh, hunt out those zombies and we stick them on the targets. And you, you, you do a, a course, you know, you, you team up and you see who can shoot the most accurate, you know, at, at, at the distance that they are at, either on the basics or, or in advance. Or we'll do aerial targets or we'll do moving targets, you know. So there's, there's always one lesson of every month where you focus on your technique and you get one lesson every month that focus on your aiming. And then you, you always got one lesson where you can just basically have an edit. And, and alhamdulillah, we, we've had some success at it where even a child of seven years and eight years old, they've always been in in gross in archery and you don't have a section where a child say no this is now too boring now you know because every lesson we always change it around we always make it an exciting you know event for our archers you know so nice to get start them young uh, i know my kids they all start when they're about five or six years old and um i know my youngest he was he was in Cub Scouts and and I had the, their their little pack come up and at the range and, and do some shooting. That's when I owned the sporting goods store with the archery in it. And you know, he he shot there and then he ended up shooting all day long. And he'd go in there and shoot for hours and he just had a whole pile of arrows. He might have 20 or 30 arrows and he'd just be shooting them all day long. He'll pull them and shoot them, pull them all day long. In fact, he, he learned enough that when he got to one of the scout camps um they're they're in line and he raised his hand and the guy running the the range for the scouts you know what what's up jerry and he says jerry jerry tells him knock points off on his bow <laughs> you know th this is a cub scout you know this is like seven year old he knows that the bow's not set up right <laughs> yeah yeah they, they learn they learn quick and, and teach them young and you know that's always a sport they can always pick back up you know if they drop out you know i've talked to several people that you know, when they're younger, they're into it and, you know, things happen or out of it and then they get back into it. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. You know, that, that that's something that, you know, you get it when they're young and now kids, you know, we're fighting against the thumb exercise games, you know, where you just, yes, yeah, yes, yes. You, you know, yeah, they'd rather go on the, the, the Nintendo or the Wii or something and do archery on there instead of grabbing a real bow and put it in their hands, you know? <laughs> And like a, 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 a part of, of my whole idea behind archery is that how can we gather the youth, you know? How can we take them off the streets or out of their homes, off the couches, off the TVs, off the cell phones, you know? And indulge them into a sport where it actually benefits them, you know? And that has been basically one of the highest focuses also. Yeah, it's it, it's always fun to get out there and 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 work with the kids and and even adults. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the the adults sometimes can be a little harder to work with. You know, sometimes totally sometimes yes, yeah, sometimes totally not. Bad. You probably run into that. You know, some adults just like <laughs> I know everything. I, I you can't teach me nothing, and it's like okay. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when, when I was doing a lot of teaching, because I worked at both Bass Pro and Cabela's, you know, in archery departments, and, you know, you start talking to somebody, and, and you learn real quick, ah, I'm not going to help this guy out, you know, there, mm -hmm. or this Lira or whatever, and and they just, their their attitude says, you know, I know what I'm doing, you can't help me, and, and, then, you, and then you don't, you know, and others like, oh, man, uh, <laughs> why am I struggling, why am I struggling, it's like, well, you change this and this, you know, you can, you can, you can improve and then they change it and they're like, oh, cool. What else can I do? <laughs> you know, yeah, those are the ones you want to work with. And, and, and you get, get knack, you know, you've been teaching for a while. You, you kind of have a knack of picking up when, when somebody is going to be open and coachable and. You can actually get there from the first session that they have, you know, um, one of my oldest, uh, one of my, the oldest arches I have, uh, he's now 74 years old, you, you know. Uh, he started on the basics, he completed the basics, he, he completed it once, and 
he completed advanced level two. You know, at seventy four years old, he shot in a fifty pound bow, and he actually competes against those who are thirty and twenty years old. And surprisingly, he, he gives them a hiding. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and and what he tells me, you you know, like you know, if like anybody has to ask me a success. Or in a, he will be specifically a success or a story I have. So like he tells in me that the own that looks like his internet went out. So yeah, he, he said sometimes the power goes out and that's kind of what happened here. So I imagine uh, he uh, got disconnected. So it was great talking to him. I uh, don't know if he'll be able to connect back in or not. So we'll, we'll stay on a couple more minutes. But yeah, it was it was definitely interesting talking to him. He's, you know, he's got quite a story over there in uh, uh, South Africa, you know, starting out, you know, a, a young kid wanting archery and can't afford one and making it, uh, making his own. Uh, it, that was, that was interesting. And then now he's supplying all the wood arrows for especially South Africa there. So, you know, that that's, that's the kind of thing. That's something you can do when you, when you start digging in and, you know, you have a passion for something and you just dig in and go. Uh, I don't know if he'll get a chance to hook back up, but he says sometimes power goes out, might be out for a couple hours. But, you know, we had a good conversation. We lasted about 45 minutes for his power went out. So, yeah, it's uh, if you have any questions on anything like that, you know, if you're looking for uh, some archery equipment, you know, like I said, I'll leave a link to his, his site um, in a description for this. And if you're watching one of the videos, then I'll, I'll leave a, a you know link in the description there. And then you know if you have, if you don't see it, just message me, and then I can help you out. And you know like we talked about you know I was an archery coach since 1995, taught lots and lots of people. And one of the things that I offer for those that are interested in, in archery, learning a little bit better, I do offer a 15 minute consultation call. I, I'll leave a link in the description on the form to fill out to see if it's it might be for you. I only have rooms there for so many, so um, make sure you fill it out to you know answer all the questions. And if it's something that uh, uh, works for both of us, we can do it. You know, it may or may not be for you, and we won't know until we get on the phone. So once again, I'll leave that in the description. Been really great talking to him. Uh, we kind of missed out a couple of closing thoughts, but uh, it's uh, you know that's what it is when you're talking some somebody over the internet and you're in you're in Nebraska in the United States and he's over in South Africa. Wow, look looks like he's joining back in. <laughs> well, welcome back. <laughs> hello? Yeah, hello, welcome back. I uh, thanks a lot. I apologize this electricity issues. <laughs> oh, <that's horrible. laughs> yeah 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 that's kind of my thought so i i just kind of uh, kept talking <laughs> a little bit uh, hoping you'd come back in and you know because i wanted to get some kind of closing thoughts or something too you know on what you, what your um you know what your, your thoughts are on archery where where you plan on taking archery in the future you know what are your mm -hmm. plans on that oh, all right so um the, our whole uh plan on here is obviously to reach an international level, right? Um, I'm sure you've heard of Henry Bodnick, uh, where Henry Bodnick is now has reached a stage where he goes out and he, he, he offers training. And at the same time, he, he hosts uh, events and competitions, you know? Uh, so the whole, um, my plans for <laughs> future is is how can I get our home of archer the archers you know the archers of South Africa to actually uh, uh, move on on an international level where they are able to go overseas and compete with the overseas competitions to come to America to shoot uh, IBO. Uh, so that is uh, basically what I am now working towards. Uh, it is quite challenging here in South Africa because the facilities 
we have the access to archery and archery equipment is extremely limited. Um, basically, you can say everything for archery we import from America or from overseas, you know. Um, so we are still growing into archery. I am a dealer for Bepo. Uh, so I'm trying my utmost best that how can I actually revive traditional archery here uh, in South Africa again. Uh, so, yeah, I would say the main goal I have is to try and get our archers on an international level and be able to take their passion, you know, and go what it and really presents South Africa across the globe. That, that's that's a big goal. <laughs> you got to have big goals, goal. right? <laughs> <laughs> They always say if you dream for the skies, you'll always reach the skies. If you dream for the stars, you'll always reach the stars. But if you dream for heaven, you will be able to always reach it. So I always keep my thoughts high. And I always try to make as much effort as a, a possible that I, that I can, you know, uh, to take it there. We are lucky because... Uh, Haifa is hosting the, the 2025 World Championships here in, in South Africa. Uh, so this gives us an excellent opportunity where we can actually take our archers. Now, instead of going to London or to USA or to Belgium, we can actually take our archers here in South Africa, you know, and uh, put them on the on an international field and at least give them this opportunity to actually, you know, shoot against or to shoot in a international competition. Oh, that that that's really good. You know, you said 2025 would be coming to South Africa. That's that that's that's a good goal for your archers to work for. It's like. Hey, we've got a couple more years and it's going to be right here in our backyard. Let's get ready. You know, put and everybody like push each other. Since we heard about it and I've like started now making efforts on it, every single archer I have that didn't even like want to take a part in comps and so on, they now like, like so enthusiastic about it. All they can now talk about this, you know, uh, preparing uh, for 2025. Yeah, when it when it comes to your 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 home to, to do it, it's it gives you an extra incentive to do it because, you know, some people just, thought, you know, I don't want to travel, you know, to the United States or, or London or, or wherever. I don't want to travel that far, you know, but now it's like I could drive <laughs> to wherever it's at. <laughs> You know, I don't have to get on a, a, a plane to fly, you know, for hours and hours. I can just drive for a few hours and be there. And, and uh -huh. you know, that, that, that makes it a lot more exciting when it's, you know, right right in your own backyard, basically. Yes, for sure. So that is our our goal. And I hope I hope we are able to do at least something, you know, uh, in 2025. Uh, 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 but obviously, I still have another long way also. So I am going to be making quite a lot of effort on it also. Yeah, and, and even if you don't compete, just be in there. there there's something about being in one of those, those high-level events that mm -hmm, you just get mm -hmm. so much out of it. You know, you see the other archers, you see what they're doing, and, and you can watch <clears throat> what they're doing. You know, find somebody that you've been you, you've been watching, and, and, and now you can go actually see them in person and say, okay, watch what they're doing. And a lot of them, you know, if, if they're not in the middle of the competition, you know, they're probably not going to talk to you right before they get on stage, you know, to go shoot. But after mm -hmm. they're done, yeah, a lot of them are, are, are going to be willing to talk to you, ask them questions. You know, you know, a lot of the uh, archers, you know, it's like, you ask me a question, I'm, I'm going to help you, you know, best I can. And, um, you know, that, that's why, you know, on, on my 3D rig, I have my instructor patch on there, you know, if there's somebody, you know has a question they know i'm an instructor they can they can ask mm -hmm. me you know i when i'm mm -hmm. down practicing i just don't go say hey i can i can make you shoot better i can make you shoot better you know i'm not going to shoot you know if, mm -hmm. if we get a conversation it's like hey you know maybe try this or something and, and you know but i don't mm -hmm. you know say hey you know you're doing it wrong 
because that's the best way to say, yeah, I'm doing it just fine. Go away. <laughs> that's yes. Yeah. And it would it would it would also be a good platform for me to also uh, advertise the post that I'm uh, building also. And and I think I do require quite a part of the international scope also. Um, I do send a few bows overseas, but not as much as I would I would like to, you know. So hopefully this this um, national competition it would hopefully help me also, you know, uh, to show off the equipment I have, to show off the bows that I am building, you know, and to try and get obviously the bows, uh, you know, into the hands of those archers also. Yeah, and that that would that's a good marketing player where you take some of your bows and some of these archers. It's like, hey, see see how this feels. Let me know. You know, <laughs> what do you like about what do you don't like about it? And, and they might just say, you know, we change this little thing here, it fits me perfectly, or it's like, man, it fits me nice. And and then like, hey, use it in competition if you want. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, they, they used your bow to win. <laughs> Now, now a lot of them may not want to change bows in the middle of it, but you know, hey, if they like the way it shoots and they're shooting good with it, hey, mm -hmm. why not, right? For sure. <laughs> I I have one of uh, my uh, guys here is from uh, uh, Cape Town, and he tied out the bow that I have, and then he was like, "Okay, I'm going to the uh, to the uh, to the indoor." World Championships in London, uh, 2023, uh, build me a bow, you know? So like head on, he made me build him a bow and now he's gonna take that bow all the way to England and he's gonna not take a, a part in a shoot now. So that's, that, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, especially yeah, when he goes he over there and he something. wins. <laughs> and he's, yeah. They got your name on the bow, and, and it's like, okay, this guy made the bow for me. You can make yours too. Yes, for sure. Well, what do you have like uh, parting thoughts for the day before we end, end the podcast here? Okay, uh, so like as a coach to coach, right? Um, this was an advice a person gave to me before I started the soul archery thing, you know. Um, in South Africa, we have, like, you know, if something new comes up, everybody wants to do it, you know. Uh, like, I started teaching archery, and within half a year of me teaching archery, around 10 different people also started teaching archery, you know. Uh, so this guy's advice to me was do it with a passion, you know. Teach archery with a passion and don't teach archery as a means of income, you, you know. If you, you're going to go after the money, you receive the money, but you're not going to get your, your archers, you know. But uh, pour your heart into the teaching, teach art to tell you for the uh, benefit of them, and not but the mind of uh, the uh, mindset of how, how how I can earn you know extra bucks you know. Uh, so that was his advice to me, and till now, um, I I always try to keep it in, in mind that do it for the passion. Don't teach archery as a source of income, you know. Always keep it as a passion. Anything that's done with a passion will always lead you on the path of success, for sure. Yeah, that, that that's so true. You know, you, if you chase the money, then once you get the money, then, you know, there, there's no residual. You know, you need to go out for your, your passion. And, you know, and that's what one of the reasons why I started the podcast was, you know, Arch Talk 101 is the podcast name because it's for, you know, I started out, you know, here's you know, my very first podcast was, um, you know, what do you need to know before you go to the archery store and then, you know, progress along there and helping archers out. You know, that's the whole thing on mm -hmm. here. And, you know, in a, a podcast, you know, eventually you'll get monetized or you'll get a little bit coming in, but the money's not, you're not going to retire on it. Um, you know, just little that's extras, right. but mostly it's, you know, providing value to everybody else. 
And, and the same mm -hmm. thing with the, the Archer Talk 101 Facebook group, which also have that one. And it kind of all tie, ties in together. And, you know, that one there, you know, I encourage people to, you know, when they join a group, upload a video of your shooting. Somebody's going to mm -hmm. give you a critique of your video because we have people in there like me that I've been teaching for, you know, 25 years. And we got other instructors that have been teaching, you know, longer. We have new instructors learning new techniques. And, you know, there's always new techniques coming in. And what works for me may not work for you, may not work for somebody else. You know, they're all different. So we have somebody in there in what I say is, you know, find a coach that you like and stay with that one. Don't change around because, mm -hmm. you know, if I teach you one way, you teach a different way. Someone else teach a different way. Now you're so confused. You get, nothing works, <laughs> you, you know. So, you know, that that's, you know, it's all about providing value, you know, to archers, you know, and, you know, and the group I have it so that, you know, you're not going to post any links. The only links I allow is links to archery events, you know, because that's promoting, you know, archery, you know, so yes. if you have, if you have your a flyer for your archery shoot, you can post in the group and, you know, anybody that's in a group that's in you know, South Africa or could make it there would go to the group. Uh, you could go, mm -hmm. you know, you not learn about it. Um, in the group, I have people all over the world. There, okay. There's countries that I have to Google map it to figure out where it's at because <laughs> I've never heard of them. <laughs> you know, so yeah, they're, they're all over, you know, United States, Canada, you know, South America, China. Uh, I think I got some Russia and Ukraine and uh, yeah, I, I don't even know all the countries it's, it's in there. <laughs> And yeah, you know, that's the thing is, you know, you know, you're you're in South Africa and, and we have a common, you know, something we're both passionate about. And that's mm -hmm. the nice thing about archery is, you know, if you're an archery, you're automatically a friend. You, you know, <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> you know, we get get together in person, we're gonna have a lot of stuff to talk about, you know, and, and you know, then yeah, you know, I can teach you what I'm doing, you can teach you what I'm doing. And then we both get better that way. You know, and that's that's mm -hmm. the thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I've talked to several archers, they go in and you know, they're they're high, uh, high level, and then you get somebody that's a really high level archer and, and they're willing to help them. It's like it, it you know, all, we're all just about helping each other get better and better and better. And and you know, it's yeah. it's that helping somebody else, you know, they're not doing mm -hmm. it for money. Now, as coaching, we we get paid to coach, but you know, that's a dedicated <laughs> time to, to them. But you know, yeah. we're still trying to provide more value than than what they're paying for. You know, that's just the mm -hmm. way you, you want to work it. And and you know, like those saying, it's like you help enough people get what they want, you get everything you want. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, it'll, it'll come. It'll come back. You know, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that. That's uh, always something that you want to want to look at. Is like you know, how can you help somebody else and you know, some people don't understand that, you know, it's like, I'm giving away all this stuff for free. And this is, well, why do you not charge it for it? Well, because I'm going to give it away. <laughs> you know, I give enough where they're going to say, hey, if I'm giving that away, <laughs> what do I know that I'm not telling you? <laughs> I want to know what you, you're not telling me. <laughs> yeah. And there's always something, you know, I may have told you everything I know. I may not have, <laughs> but, you know, mm -hmm. and I, you know, teaching. You know, one of the things I learn is I'm teaching. You know, I, I yes. studied uh, uh, martial arts for 20 <clears throat> plus years. And, you know, even though you're teaching, you're learning as you're going along. Because, you know, everybody has a problem. You teach a technique, whether it be martial arts, whether archery or whatever technique, you teach your technique, and it's not working for them. And then we go in and say, okay, if you keep telling them the same thing, they're never going to get it. So that you get, mm -hmm. okay. How can I tell them to do the same thing, but tell it differently? And then it's like, you go a different path. Oh, and it clicks with them. Yeah. And that's part mm -hmm. of it. You know, as a coach, you know, you've coached a lot of kids in there and you can see one person's not getting it. Okay. What do I have to do different? You know, they're not understanding this. Yeah. And, and uh -huh. you know, we, we all just kind of shift around and, and, you know, what's working for them and, you know, what's worked mm -hmm. for one may not work for somebody else and just learn it. Oh, sure. <clears throat> Well, it's been real great talking to you. Um, you know, we lost you for a couple of minutes. You got back on. Uh, that was good. <laughs> so, let's get, my name is Roy Canterbury. I've been your host today on Archer Talk 101. And we had a good conversation um, with, I never could figure out how to pronounce your name. 
it is Hudayfa Hassan. Hudayfa Hassan. <laughs> my, I, I have trouble with, with some of these names. Uh, I, I don't say them all the time. So <laughs> anyway, it's it's been great talking to you. And uh, we'll see everybody in uh, the next one. And we want to make sure that uh, you get in here. Remember, I'll put links in the description, how to get a hold of um, him if he wants uh, a bow or anything from him. I'll put that link in the description. And uh, uh, it's been great talking to you.